after those prayers and encouraging words, how, how could one not fear and tremble before Almighty God because it is such, such a high, high calling and such a high responsibility to preach the Word of God and yet it's at the same time also a great, great honor to be called of God and to have the liberty and to have the responsibility. It is a great honor. I welcome everyone that is here this morning. Most of you, most of you have been here before. Those of you that have not, if this is your first time, you have a special welcome here. A special welcome. We're glad you're here. Welcome to those that are watching live. Again, thank you, thank you for your prayers, your encouraging messages, your encouraging emails. Like I said, how else, what else could we do but do well with the help of the Lord? And I've often, often, often told people and told them the same thing yesterday in Toronto. I can do what I'm doing, first of all, because of God and also because of people like you. And this morning, I would like to invite you, preach with me. You say, well, how does that work? We don't all have a microphone. You don't need a microphone to preach with me. But if you are in your heart or laboring with me, preaching with me, and reaching out to God with me, as the brother said, there are those here this morning that are not saved, those that don't know Christ. But thank God, this is still a day of grace. Yeah. This is still a day. Today could actually be your day. Right. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. There's actually no reason for anyone to leave these grounds unsaved. No one. No one needs to leave. This is your day. But pastor, I don't know. I don't see how I could do it. That's a good candidate. When you don't know how, when you don't see that you could do it, because it's not you, it takes God. It takes God. All it takes from our side is a total surrender and say, Lord, like the brother said, I am wrong. I am wrong, Lord. It takes you. Well, this morning, we are here one more time. Like I said, the reason we're out here, for those of you who are watching, is we don't fit in the building. So uh, we sense a little cooler weather this morning. So we know that the Lord said in Genesis that the seasons will not stop until He comes. So to be positive, snow is coming. But... <laughs> To be extra positive, it's just a few more months and winter is past. So it won't be long. And Lord willing, we will just continue gathering like this the week after week. We're looking to get a big tent so that we are taken care of during the winter. Or, or maybe we just quickly build a big building. Who knows? Who knows? God is almighty. God knows how to do it. All I know, all I know is that God wants us gathered. God wants us gathered. And you are up for a huge fight if you want to fight against God. I'm not, I'm not saying you. We're here not fighting against God, but I'm saying anyone in this world don't fight against God. No one has ever won that fights against God. So don't even go there. God help us. All right. We have a title to preach on this morning. And I don't believe I will preach just very long. We actually here don't go by the clock. So cover your clock, your watch with the sleeve. Or put it away. And don't worry about it. I promise you if the world still stands when we're done preaching... We will serve you a meal, so it'll be worth waiting. So God help us, but we first need food for our soul. The title this morning is Having Seeing Eyes and Hearing Ears. Yes. Having Seeing Eyes and Having Hearing Ears. I don't know about you, but when I was young in school, and when we read the Bible verses, and Jesus said, He that hath ears, let him hear. I had difficulty with it. I'm just saying that was a long time ago. I was a little boy. I just thought, well, that's everybody. We all have ears. But since then, I have found out, 
And brethren, more than ever before in 2021, not everyone that has physical ears hears. And not everyone that has physical eyes is, can see. So the, it is actually the miracle of having seeing eyes and hearing ears. That actually goes very, very deep. Because then you will see far beyond, far beyond what a government mandates. And oh, how should I, do I need to say it again? How many times have I said it? I have no ill feeling. I am not bitter against anyone. But I will boldly, boldly proclaim this morning that far above any government mandates goes the mandate of God of heaven. Far above it, far above it. Anytime, anytime a government mandate con conflicts, is that the word? Contradicts or conflicts with the word of God. Guess what? Not even a question, not even a question because we are people of the book. But this morning we know that not everybody sees Matthew 13, verse 16, reading out of the King James, says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Thank God. I believe maybe I could speak to a mo for a moment to those of you that are hurting because of friends that you have lost, family members that have turned against you. You know what? Be encouraged above everything else. Listen with the spiritual ears. See with the spiritual eyes. Look deeper. I want to tell you something. You can actually get to the place where a, people, a person is this close to you and saying you are a piece of this and you are that and swearing at you and it doesn't move you at all. Not at all. Because I hear their cry of the soul. I see the despair in their heart. Those outward words. Listen, there was a time when I was like Saul. There was a time when I persecuted the children of God. But my soul was crying to God. So people, don't just listen to the outward words. Don't just look at the, at the, at the uh, uh, facial expressions. But look deeper. Listen closer. Jesus said, he that hath ears, let him hear. So I want to mention to you, I want to quickly go over a few instances in the Bible where we see that there's something different about people that look deeper. There was a man in the Bible, and you might not first understand exactly where I'm going, but if you follow me, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll, you'll see where we're going. In this time that we're living in, in 2021, it's not just people. It's not just people that are used to going to church and are accustomed to go to church that all of a sudden see beyond, all of a sudden hear beyond. There was a man in the book of Acts. His name was Gamaliel. His name was Gamaliel. He was, it says, a doctor of the law. It says he spoke to, well, let me just say this. The disciples, the apostles were brought before court. Someone accused me recently. They said, Pastor, if you real, were really of God, you wouldn't be dealing with the courts. I said, I didn't pick that. I said, they dragged me there. I said, I am not there by choice. If you want to know, I've been in the Elmer area for the last 30 years. If I had wanted to go before the courts, why did it take me 30 years to get there? Look, it's not my choice. It's not what I am picking. It's not what I am wanting. By the way, the apostles in the Bible were constantly before the courts, not because they wanted to, but they were dragged there. So they had, just like in 2021, they had these apostles, they had these disciples of Jesus, they had them before the courts. And the judge was looking at them, and the uh, other people were looking at them, and they were wondering, what should we do with these people? These are bad people, you know. And all of a sudden, a man got up, and 
I can't help, I, 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 I can't help but to say that we have people like that sitting in our midst. We have Gamaliel's sitting in our midst right here this morning on these grounds. They have enough courage. They have enough eyesight that they look beyond. Gamaliel was looking at what was before them. And Gamaliel said, can I ask that you would put those, those people uh, out of the court for a little bit? I have some words to say. So they took the apostles out of the courtroom and they closed the doors. And Mr. Gamaliel got up. And I am amazed at what that man said. He looked at them that were in the court and he said, And now I say unto you, I like, I like, well, I will in this sense, I will say I like Brother Gamaliel. Gamaliel said, he looked at the people, at the, at the judge and them, and he said, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. In all due respect to our judges in Ontario, I've got news for you. If, if Brother Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, Pastor, you don't know the law. Yes, you might be right, but you have recently heavily forced me to get to know the law. It was never my intention to go to law school, but I've been actively in law school the last 18 months. But by the way, so uh, Gamaliel, if Gamaliel was here, he would tell our judges. This is what Gamaliel would say. He would tell the judges, look, folks, leave these churches alone. <laughs> Brother, I believe it wholeheartedly. I'll bring it a little closer. Is that okay? I think Brother Gamaliel would tell our local judges, leave Pastor Hildebrandt alone. Yeah. On what grounds? I'll let you know. It says, by the way, he has permission to take pictures, so don't worry about it. Okay? So uh, he says, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if... This counsel or this work be of man, it will come to naught. What's the plain English for that? It will come to naught. What's the plain English? Shout it out. It won't happen. Don't worry about it. It will just dissipate. Is that a word? It will just disappear. Don't waste your time on it. In high regard, in high respect, as much as I know how, the judge keeps saying, Pastor Hildebrandt, I don't want to see you before the court again. All I can say is, see what Brother Gamaliel has to tell you, sir. And Brother Gamaliel will say, leave him alone and he won't show up in court. Thank you, brother. But Brother Gamaliel, do you know what he's doing? Yes, I know what Peter and John and James and Thomas are doing. I know what they're doing. But I'm saying leave them alone. Gamaliel saw something. He looked beyond what he saw in those disciples. He says, he says, but if it be of God, in other words, he's saying there is a chance that this is of God. So, if this is of God, in case this is of God, I don't know how else to say it. Our judges will in the end stand as somebody that was fighting against God. Right? So I'm, I'm calling on all Canadians. I'm calling on all Christians. I'm calling on all denominations. On all humans. I'm calling on every one of them. Stand with God. Stand with God. 
nothing has driven the fear into me because if it is of God, we cannot overthrow it. When you lock the building, the attendance doubles. What would it take for you to realize, don't touch what God is doing? I know this is not popular to say this, but COVID is causing an awakening worldwide. I'll speak for you just a little bit, okay? So when I speak for you, don't stand up because then everybody knows it was you. <laughs> you can hardly believe it that you're even sitting here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. What am I doing? Why am I here? It's God doing, not you, not me. It is God doing the work. God is waking us up. Brother, God is waking us up as a nation. We have forgotten the word of God. And he's bringing us back. Yes, Talking about a great reset. It's God's, God has the right to that. He's going to reset as it needs to be reset. Yes. Amen. Now when Gamaliel spoke, they looked at him and they said, that's, that's the way it is. They brought the people back in. They said, okay, we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. They realized Gamaliel was right. It was wisdom what he said. And we need more. And thank God for the Gamaliels in our midst. We need more of those. I, I'll, I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you, and I'm not alone. We, ad high, we highly admire Every single time we hear that some mayor or some MPP or some MP, we admire highly when they have the courage to rise up and say, and stand up and say, here I stand. I can do no other, so help me God. Wouldn't it be the day, Pastor, you, now, you're, now you're daydreaming. Well, whatever it is, wouldn't it be the day if our prime minister stood up today on this Sunday, the 19th of September, just before the election, wouldn't it be good if our prime minister stood up and said, I am wrong? Wouldn't it be good if he said, I ask for prayer and fasting across this country and we're going to seek God. I think we would all agree, let's push the election out another month or maybe just drop it. But let's just seek God and let's find out what are we doing in this country? What are we doing? What are we telling the Cubans? What are we telling the Russians? What are we telling those people that lived through communism? What are we telling them? God, wake them up. Was there, was there only one Gamaliel? Is there no more Gamaliels? Is there no more? Brethren, we want to see one a day. We want to see people rise up, stand up, take a stand. But it is slow process, it seems. It's a slow process. But thank God they are there. There was... There was a queen, it's called, in the New Testament, she's called the Queen of the South. A Queen of the South, that's what she's called. Don't worry, we're not talking about Queen Elizabeth or any other people like that. This is, it's, it says, the New Testament says the Queen of the South, and in the Old Testament, she's called the Queen of Sheba. This woman, this woman lived roughly, I can't figure out exactly, there's no, no, no way of knowing exactly where she came from, but historians tell us that this woman was about 2,500 kilometers away from where Solomon was. 2,500 kilometers away from where Solomon was. And something came to her ears. Something came to her. She heard that there's an amazing king in Jerusalem. An amazing king. That God is doing mighty, mighty things there. Something is going on in Jerusalem. 
How did she hear that? How did she find out that there was something going on? 2,500 kilometers away, they had no Samsung phones. They had no Apple phones or they had no email. There was none of that. How did she know? Somehow, somehow there was something in her. And brethren, we are living in the time where you will see that people from far away will hear something is going on. And you know what? She packed up her camels. I believe that's what they used to travel in those days. She packed up her camels and they set out to get to where Solomon was. And I try to find out for you, how long was that trip? They said, well, if it was in an expedient way, like just move, 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 it took three years. If it was just the normal traveling, it would be seven years to get there all the way from Yemen, all the way from south, uh, wherever that is, Africa, bordering Africa, all the way from there. It was a long, 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 long trip. And you know what happened? You know what happened? This queen of Sheba gathered up her stuff, loaded the camels with gifts, a lot of gold, a lot of silver, took a lot of things with her. And you know what her goal was? I've got to go where God is. And she might not have known what to call it. She might not have known just what all will be happening. But there was something in this woman, brethren. There was something in this woman. I've got to get to where the real thing is. And as she's traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling, one day she arrives at where Solomon is. Oh, I wish I could go into all the details, what all that could mean, but I'll let your imagination interpret as we go. So as she is approaching the place, and I believe she's can, she can already hear what is going on there. She comes there and she sees what is actually happening. And you know what she says? You know what she says once she got there? She looked around, Solomon showed her, look, this is how our servants eat. This is what we do. This is how we operate. What did she say? It says there was hardly any strength in her and oh in other words she almost fainted she almost could not take what is going on here she said the half was not reported to me the half was not reported to me let me tell you something my friends when you are in a church service where God is present where the anointing of God is connecting the people with God we can never describe that service. We can never do it virtual. We can never do it, tell somebody, write somebody. When you are there, that's why people will walk away from it. And they'll say, you just, you, you, just, you just had to be there. You just had to be there. The queen could not describe, going back describing. She said not the half was told, not the half. She had something, she heard something, she saw something that the general public did not see. Now, now, now I want to get a, bring it a little closer. Why are we gathered here? Why are we gathered here? Did you know that we are in a sad situation in this world? Did you know that there is many people that do not see there's many people that do not hear. You and I can listen to the exact same thing. These two people can listen to the exact same thing and we hear something totally different. There's something about when your eyes get opened up. And in the last 18 months for us, for us that see, it just becomes clearer and clearer. Is that right? For us, it's just more obvious and more obvious what is actually going on. But there is a serious, serious uh, blindness there. Now, what must she have heard? What brought her all this way? What made her do this 2,000 plus kilometer trip? Brethren, I'll tell you what. When you desire the glory of God, when you desire, listen, I would, it, no kilometers would be too much for me to fly or drive or go wherever. If I know God is there, it draws me to get over there. It, it, it draws me. I want to be there. I want to be there. And brethren, God is waking up the population nationwide, worldwide. Where is God? Where is God? And it's our duty to let them know where God is.
as the, as the uh, last of the three examples that I want to bring to you was the wise man from the east. So what did they read? What did the wise man in the east, what did they read or what did they hear? What, what were they watching? You know that. What were they watching? They were watching the stars. So let me ask you a question. Was no one in Jerusalem watching the stars? How come? Let me, let me read here. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, I'm reading Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. There came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born, uh, the, where, is, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Jerusalem is troubled, and the king is supposed to be born in Jerusalem. Have you not read the book? Have you not read the prophecy? Are you not waiting for something? And brethren, I have to ask you the same question this morning. We as pastors worldwide, we as churches worldwide, have we not read the book? Have we not read the prophecies? Is this all a shock to us? Are we surprised what is going on? Why? Why is Jerusalem, we could say Jerusalem, talking about God's people. Why is Jerusalem shocked? Why do the kings of the earth have to come and tell us about Jesus? I want to bring you a little closer. Why do the atheists have to come and tell the church people, you all should have church? Shame on us. Shame on us if the atheist has to come and tell us you all should stand up for your God-given freedom. It's like, and I'm not saying they were atheists. I'm saying they saw something that Jerusalem didn't see. Why did Jerusalem not see it? Why are the churches nationwide cowing down? Down, down, brethren. I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. That churches would ask, that pastors would ask, why are you excluding us from the mandates? Why don't you put those mandates on us as churches as well? That's tremendous. That's tremendous. Maybe the kings of the east will have to come. Maybe the people from, uh, from Cuba will have to come and tell us, do you not appreciate your God-given freedoms? Or maybe Cuba will have to invite us. If we have religious persecution, we could come to Cuba. No wisdom in Jerusalem? Is there no wisdom in the churches? Are the churches behind in reading the book? Reading the promise, the prophecies? Do the atheists need to come and tell us what is happening? Do the sheep need to tell the shepherds that they need pasture? Every single time, basically, that I'm in any kind of gathering, a rally or anything else, basically every single time, people are coming to me and begging, what can I do? What can we do with my pastor? What can we do? He won't preach. He won't preach. I will just tell you this morning, fire him. If a pastor can preach, fire him. Let him go. Tell him he's relieved of his duties. And let's get some fisherman, somebody that never went to cemetery school. I mean, what's it called? Seminary school. Let's get somebody, let's get somebody that as long as they can read, and if they can't read, let's have a reader for them. Let's get Peter, James, and John, and let's get some simple fishermen, but let's have pastors. Amen. But pastor, they were never educated for that. Maybe they were overeducated if they can't preach. Once your education is done and you can't preach, you have, your qualifications have superseded. You need to look for a plumbing job or something because you can preach. 
Pastors need to preach. Preachers need to preach. And if there ever was a time to preach, it is now. <laughs> and I want to take a moment, I want to take a moment to say I'm very glad for every single God-called preacher in the land of Canada that is standing up worldwide, that is standing up preaching the word. Brother, preacher, if you're listening in, preach the word. Preach the word. Worry not about those other things. Worry not. You know what Peter said to the judge? You know what Peter said in court? He said, we must obey God rather than man. Brethren, we need ears that can hear. We need eyes that can see beyond what is happening in our little town, what is happening in our little province. We need eyes and ears that listen upward. Look upward, as the brother said. Look upward to where our... Bread comes from. Jeremiah says, Hear now this, O foolish people and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Adam Clark says, We're dealing with deep, willful blindness. We are presently in 2021 dealing with deep, willful blindness. When we hear our judges speak, when we hear our health people, unelected health officials speak, it sounds like we are in a country that has never heard of God. It seems like we're in a country that has never heard uh, of there being 25 Bible scriptures engraved at the parliament building. Pastor, you said that before. But did you say how many times we have to say it again and again and again and again and again and again? <laughs> Canada was founded. We're found, whereas Canada is founded. Say it. All right, recognizing the principles of the supremacy of God. That is what we were founded on. That is our foundation. Brethren, we cannot be going off the foundation. We must hear it. We must see it. This, there's something deeper than this. But Matthew 13, 16 says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. Brethren, right now, we must hear the cries of the people that are troubled, the cries of the people that are suicidal, the cries of the people that are uh, in drugs. Don't know. Brethren, we are so blessed. Every Sunday we come here together, we eat together, we fellowship numerous times a week. What about the people that have no one? What about the people that have no one? Brethren, let's go out. And if you're not a preacher, listen, this is for all of us, each one of us. Let's go out. Let's gather them in. Bring them. Bring them. And if you can do, do like, well, who was it? Who was it? Uh, was it uh, Philip? I believe it was Philip. He found Nathaniel, And Nathaniel said, like, what good can come from Elmer? I mean, from Nazareth? What good can come from there? And, and what did he say? What did Nathaniel? what did Philip say? Come and see. Come. Come. You know what? Bring them, bring them, grab some friend, tell someone, come, come, let's go. Brethren, I'm not talking about these grounds in particular. I'm not talking about that you have to be on this lawn. But what I'm saying, come where God is. Come where God is. This is the time. Come, come. Because God is calling his people. God is calling. May God bless you. Thank you for your attention. God bless you. Let us be the people that we need to be in this time. God bless you. We will, is this ready? We will have prayer now. Let's thank the Lord for the food that's been prepared. Let's pray that God would speak to every single soul. Again, like I said at the beginning, if there's someone here that is not right with God, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to get the help that you need. May God help us. Let's pray.
Father, we thank you this morning for your presence. We ask you, Lord, that you would help us, dear God. Lord, this world is in trouble. Lord, in big trouble. We ask you, Lord, that you would help in a very special way, dear Father. Lord, bless the food that's been prepared. Be with us this afternoon. Bless our fellowship together. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here together. Lord, help those that are in the real trouble. Lord, even those that are here in our midst this morning, speak to their souls. Draw them to you. Help us to help them, we pray, dear Father. Lord, we thank you for those people even in our midst that are taking a stand, that have the courage to stand up in the midst of it. Bless in a special way, dear Father. Lord, we ask also that you would bless Rick in a special way. Lord, help him to stand for the truth. And Lord, others that have been, that have been, that are standing, help Lord that many more would stand up, dear Father. Lord, please help us to fulfill our purpose in this time. Help, dear Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.